Hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk today. I am Mang Mang Cai, attorney at New Weiming Law Group, where we focus on NIW and EB1 green card applications and also all kinds of U.S. immigration and visa applications. Well, today, uh, my topic is I-485 Supplemental J-4. What do you need to know? Okay, so this J form is a relatively new thing. Uh, it's only introduced in 2017. So why this form? Well, we know uh, there is a job portability, you know, allowed under U.S. immigration law. So for some applicants, you know, from the initial immigration petition to approval of their green card, it can take several years. And in order to make it more convenient for these applicants to continue their career path, you know, Congress allows the job portability, you know, the so-called AC-21 rule. So applicants can change job while continue on their green card application. However, at the same time, the government wants to make sure the basis for the applicant's green card application remains. For example, uh, the applicant is still doing the same or similar type of job, and uh, his new employer is a bona fide employer, well, supports the same or similar type of position, and the employer has ability to pay the applicant's, the beneficiary's wage. So that's why we need this supplemental J-4. And then, who needs to file this form? Well, those employment-based green card applicants through the PERM category and through the EB1B Outstanding Researcher category, they will need this J-4. Well, for those who apply through EB1A Alien of Extraordinary Ability or NIW National Interest Waiver categories, they do not need the J-4. Next question, when do I need to submit this form? Okay. If you submit I-485 and I-140 together, then you do not need the J-4. Why? Because in your I-140 form, you already have all the employer information and your job information. Well, on the other hand, for applicants from China and India, often there's a cutoff date and they need to wait sometimes several years after the I-140 application to submit their I-485. In that case, well, when they submit I-485 by itself, they do need to submit this supplemental J-4. And later, if they change job, well, they are also required to submit the J-4 after the job change. And also sometimes the USCIS will issue the RFE request for evidence asking specifically for the J-4. And then, of course, you will need to submit it. Another situation is if you did not submit J form in the past, but feel that you need to, well, you can bring the J form to the interview before your I-485 is approved. Next question is, what contents are needed for the supplemental J form? Well, the J form needs to be signed by the employer. It needs to include the job information, so your job code, your job title, and the job description in order to prove the new job is still same or similar. And also it requires employer information, such as the revenue and the profit of the employer, and also the total number of employees, financial information, and the documents from the employer. Well, some employers are reluctant to release this confidential information to their employees. How to solve this problem? Well, if the employer has an attorney working on the case, the employer can send this information to the lawyer who represents the case, and the attorney will keep the information confidential. So overall, as we can see, the purpose of the J form is to show, well, you submitted I-485, but the basis for your employment-based green card still remains. You are still working uh, same or similar job and supported by a bona fide qualified employer. That's the purpose. Overall, as we know, the I-485 process is taking longer and there's more strict standard. So the J form is becoming more important. If you have questions, you can contact us for more information. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.